You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time of day it is for you, make it a good day. Indeed. Welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob, and you are listening to episode number 392, and thank you very much. We appreciate that you're with us today. I've got a question for you, Rob. Please. It's a part 107 drone test question. Cannot wait. Yes. Okay. Let's do this. Here it is. Which airspace classification is an RPIC, remote pilot in command, allowed to fly without prior approval? Hmm. Which airspace classification is an RPIC allowed to fly without prior approval? Can we, you know, you should have done it like Jeopardy, and then we could have had Jeopardy music. Ooh. Anyways, what is G airspace? That's right. <laughs> you just want a new car. If only. No, you just right, want a so new G-Airspace. lifestyle where you can travel all over the world and get paid to fly toys. <laughs> oh, yeah. That sounds all right, too. <laughs> right? Yeah, which one of those actually sounds better? Okay. Question number two for Mr. Rob. Coming right up. <laughs> all right. An RPIC, Remote Pilot in Command. May not operate over 400 feet AGL unless... This is a really interesting question, actually. I had not even really thought about this. But the answer is, as long as you're within a radius of 400 feet of a structure, you can then fly 400 feet above that structure, right? So it kind of resets your AGL, essentially. So, yes, the proper answer is the UA is flown within a 400-foot radius of a structure Mm -hmm. and doesn't fly higher than 400 feet above the structure's immediate uppermost limit. You know what I find with a lot of these answers is, like, half of the words within the answer need some form of definition for the answer to actually be helpful. (laughs) Immediate uppermost limit. Well, on that bombshell, the test is over, Rob. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, anyway, guys, we thought we would give you some more test questions for part 107. I am still working on that study guide. I know you hate saying it, but if you become a DroneU member, you'll be one of the first to get it. So make sure you sign up uh, at thedroneu.com and say, get started here. By the way, I think an important point on that is that Current members, they are going to have this included in their membership. That's right. Whereas people that want to buy the course are going to end up paying a little bit more for the course than if they were just a member. Yeah. Well, I think it's also really funny, too, because uh, I've been getting questions from other groups who are charging like 150, like 200 bucks, right? And their material is a joke. I mean, like, and I've been building it all into... You know, uh, like ours, just to see, like, okay, do we have that? Okay, we have that. Do we have that? No, we don't have that. So I've been like cross checking it, cross mm-hmm. cross referencing it. But for someone to pay 150 to 200 bucks for a study guide is kind of absurd. So, well, yeah, maybe, maybe not. I mean, it depends on what else is out there for less. If there's something out there that's better for less, then yes, it's absurd. So I guess what we're saying is there will be, and therefore it's absurd. <laughs> right? Is that what you're saying? I like that train of thought right there. Uh, <laughs> yes, that is exactly right. Um, anyway, guys, thanks again for listening in to the show. We do really appreciate it. Uh, if you want more questions, check us out on Instagram. We've got questions uh, going up every day. Also, every weekday, I'm posting new questions into the Drone U community, which is a fi- private Facebook page. Uh, But anyway, let's get into today's question, Rob. What do you have for us today? All right, let's do it. It has nothing to do with 107. Oh, perfect. I know. (laughs) Hi, Drone U. This is Keenan Newton with Skyora Aerial Imagery Services at Skyora.net. I have a question about the new DJI Z3 zoom lens. I'm super excited about it, the capabilities, but I saw this note on the bottom page as I was ordering it that mentioned that in full zoom mode, there may be some issues with video stabilization. Now, is this a specific issue, do you think, with the Z3? Or do all zoom uh, cameras have that issue? Is it something to do with the optical zoom? Or is it something to do with the digital zoom? Just curious on what your thoughts are. Does the X5 have the same issue? I don't know. 
Um, looking forward to hearing your answer, and uh, thanks for all that you guys do. Thanks. Bye. So, there you go. Cool new camera coming out with Zoom. Everybody's excited about it. I know you are. Yeah, I already ordered it. Just letting everyone know, so I hope to be one of the first to get it. Um, but that being said, you know, when a camera is zoomed in, Rob, any movement is magnified. Right. No matter what. Whether you're flying a big 5D Mark III with a 24 to 70 zoom lens on it, at 70 millimeters, the smallest movement is going to be magnified so much. If you thought you had steady hands before... You're gonna They're start not steady enough. You're gonna start looking like Back to the Future. We need surgeon style hands here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. In fact, I actually think, uh, I think, I think in some instances, flying drones require steadier hands than a surgeon because I think you have more more stressful environments. I don't know. Well, if I need some work, I'm gonna go to the surgeon, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna say. Well, Paul's a good pilot. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> he could um, probably handle this. But anyway, DJI um, wanted to add a layer you know, of control to the Z3's yaw axis. So what they did is actually created the custom designed reaction wheel, uh, which works in tandem with the normal yaw motor to allow for more refined and more controlled movement. So, so like it helps. Like the X5 when you pull, you know, when you're using the X5, you get a whole new interface on the D- DJI Go app. So I'm imagining you would get a new interface as well and, you know, you're going to be able to adjust I feel like it's kind of that dead band, that movement mm-hmm. between when you stop the gimbal and its actual stop of motion. So right. Cool. Now, so one of the things that he asked, thanks for the question Keenan, is is that something that's Applicable to the Z3 only, or is that pretty much all zoom lenses? Um, that little feature is going to be applicable to the the Z3 only. So, well, that feature, but what about the fact that the video stabilization be- stabilization becomes more challenging when you're zooming in? That's with any drone, yeah. any camera, even on the ground. It's really difficult to keep uh, to keep you know your picture steady. Even with the X5, if you're using say a 24 or a 45 millimeter lens. You'll notice that trying to keep your subject in frame is so much more difficult mm-hmm. um, when you have a field of view that that's nar- that is that narrow. Right. That is, uh, you know, you know, your image goes from super wide to super detailed and defined. And if you move just a fraction of a of a millimeter, you're going to see it in the feed. Right. So, mm. you know, right. that's why there's not really a benefit to having a big drone like the M600 with a 200 millimeter zoom lens to be filming a runner from far away because it's just so much more difficult. Right. You might as so, well just get the drone and get up close. Yeah. And follow it that way. Yeah. So, do you have hopes that someday? Somebody will develop the technology to where the zoom and stabilized video meet? Well, um, yes and no. I mean, there's going to be an element of difficulty no matter what, again, because the fundamental problem that a zoomed in lens is going to move a lot more. It's going to magnify that movement even sure. more. So but if I think the technology could overcome that, that'd be pretty cool. I think it could. Um, you know, I, we've been surprised by. Uh, advancements in the past for True. sure. So I think it could. I'd be I'm really interested to see what uh DJI has put in place here for the Z3 and mm-hmm. and to have that motion. But I but remember, you know, the main benefit of zooming in is for photos. It's really a, the you know, a huge benefit with mapping is getting more detail in shady or shadowed areas. Right. So now you're going to be able to zoom into those areas, get super detail, and your maps are going to be a lot more accurate. So I really see this whole zoom lens having benefits more so for aerial photography than aerial videography. Now, I still think it's going to be awesome for aerial videography Mm -hmm. to do like the vertigo effect where you're moving away from the subject while zooming in. That's the vertigo effect. Whoa. So um, Psychedelic. It is. I guess you could say (laughs) that. Um, It's also going to be cool to do push-ins and pull-outs. But I don't really see drone videographers using that kind of full range of zoom. I see it only being, you know, maybe like 14 to 30 or 14 to 40, not to 77 millimeters of zoom. I just right. don't see that unless, uh, you know, you could tell a really cool story. Like imagine if you're looking at downtown Santa Fe right? and you're looking at the church, but you're looking at the church through the bell tower from the church 
five blocks down the street. Mm -hmm. But you're zoomed in through the bell tower to look at the other church, and then you zoom out all the way to realize that you're next to a bell at the next adjoining church. Yeah. So, I mean, you could do cool shots like that with your But you could do that just by flying it, too. Right? Mm -hmm. Flying through, I don't know about through the bell. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, not quite the no. same. Very similar, yes, but not quite the same. So, But the thing is with drones, the freedom that you have to move them, you can match certain zoom-type shots by doing right. that, but you're not going to have the same field of view change. True. So That's true. Anyway, I'm really excited for the Z3. I'm just going to throw that, throw that out there. Cool. So hopefully it'll be here in a week, two, three, four weeks, something like that. Um, we'll see. The word on the executive DJI street is end of August. All right. Well, so four weeks. Yeah. Which means five or six. Uh, but we'll hope for the best. I've got one on order, so I'm really hoping for, for the best. Awesome. Anyway. All right, cool. So hopefully that answers Keenan's question. Um, it's just the nature of the beast is what it sounds like. Yes. So you got to learn to work within those confines. So I have a, another question that came through. It didn't really garner... Um, a full episode. A podcast episode, but it is a question that we've been getting about those maps that the Boulder Airport came up with that were apparently very, very helpful to people. We've had some people that are looking for it online and not able to find it. Why is that? Is it posted online somewhere? So it's not actually posted online. Um, if you're a drone pilot, you still have to get permission from Boulder Airport, but they provide you with that map when they give you permission. Okay. So, you know, you still have to go through the whole LOA process, the letter of agreement, and in the letter of agreement, he gives you the map. So, gotcha. uh, now if you're looking for a copy of the map to try to get airspace to change near you, uh, just email us support at the drone you because you could end up like Santa Fe airport or Prescott airport and end up changing your LOA terms and how you operate for the better to allow for more drone pilots to have a little bit more freedom, but also to restrict the airspace that's necessary for airplanes like approach. It's kind of so, like the open source mapping. How's Does that make sense? Like so? open source code, everybody can contribute oh, to yes. the enhancement of that code. They can contribute to the enhancement of these maps. That is true. That will help everybody. So that it's kind of cool. Anyways. <laughs> it's also on to... our Facebook page. If you really want to check it out, it's it's there. So anyway. Facebook page. Yes, on our Facebook page. As in the public page. That is correct. Cool. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for us today. If you found this podcast helpful or you found any of the information helpful, please leave us a review or share this podcast with someone who loves drones because chances are they'll find it helpful as well. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You.